Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. The spiritual path is a path of freedom, which also means to free ourselves from the orthodoxies of beliefs which keep so many people in prison. For instance, many people believe that the Bible is not only holy, but also the infallible word of God from cover to cover. But is that really true? When I read the Bible for the first time, I was very troubled about the way God was portrayed, particularly in the Old Testament. I did not find the God I had come to know as the unlimited, selfless, all-inclusive and unconditional love. On the contrary, the God I found here mostly was the old pagan God, a wrathful, bloodthirsty and punishing God. Although he gave us the commandment, you shall not kill through Moses, the Bible God gives orders to kill everyone and everything. He commands to kill every woman and use the girls for rape. He commands stoning, more killing, impaling, and many more, many more horrors. But what is the Bible? The Bible is nothing but a selection of countless ancient scriptures and stories into which many translators and scribes have interpreted their own consciousness in numerous passages, century after century. For instance, the story of Noah is nothing more than a retelling of the much older legend of Abnapishtim from the ancient epic of Gilgamesh. The Bible came about in the 4th century when a theologian named Jerome was asked by the Pope to compile all existing gospel texts and translate them into one book into the Latin language. This book is also called the Vulgate Bible, which the Catholic Church considers to be free of errors and binding right up until today. As there existed no original gospel, Jerome had only gospels which were retellings and were written generations after Jesus. He soon discovered that no two texts of the gospel agreed with each other. We know that the New Testament alone exists of no less than 800 preserved gospel manuscripts and the variation, differences and contradictions among them are enormous. In his utter desperation, Jerome wrote to the Pope, Is there a man who will not, when he takes the volume, meaning the Bible, in hand, break out immediately into violent language and call me a forger? and a profane person for having the audacity to add anything to the ancient books or to make any changes or corrections therein. It is said that Jerome changed the scriptures in about 3,500 places. But the New Testament still contains some real negative stuff, like Paul's falsification of the teachings of Jesus, claiming that faith alone is enough, the denigration of women, the wrath of God, death penalty, and much more. I know this is hard news for anybody who strongly believes that the Bible is God's word. I fully respect this belief. The good thing is that in spite of all the alterations, there is still a lot in the Bible that comes close to God's words, like the Ten Commandments, the Sermon on the Mount, the Golden Rule, and the other teachings by Jesus, as well as the discourses by many of the prophets, like Jeremiah who already warned us not to believe everything that is printed and called holy. He said, how can you say we are wise and the holy scripture is with us, but behold the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. Because of all the contradictions and alterations in the Bible, the religious leaders and priests carefully handpicked only specific laws and teachings or dogmas from the Bible to influence and control their followers. They are basically all smirgasbrot religions, where the leader picked and chose from the Bible what served them and what served them not. This does not only apply to all Christian organizations, but also to all orthodox branches of other religions. Allow me to finish with a humorous summary that describes this madness perfectly. Here in America, the radio and talk show host Dr. Laura Schlesinger was known for a blunt and outright advice she gave her listeners. One day, she told her audience that she had just joined an Orthodox Jewish congregation and her rabbi had informed her that according to the scriptures, homosexuality is a sin and thus she could no longer condone it. Now this surprised her audience. The following response is a brilliant and humorous open letter to Dr. Laura, written by an adoring fan, which immediately went viral when posted on the internet. 
Dear Dr. Laura, thank you for doing so much to educate people regarding God's law. I have learned a great deal from your show and try to share that knowledge with as many people as I can. When someone tries to defend the homosexual lifestyle, I, for example, I simply remind them that Leviticus 18 verse 22 clearly states it to be an abomination. End of debate. I do need some advice from you, however, regarding some other elements of God's law and how to follow them. Firstly, Leviticus 25 verse 44 states that I may possess slaves, both male and female, provided they are from neighboring nations. A friend of mine claims that this applies to Mexicans, but not Canadians. Can you clarify? Why can't I own Canadians? Second, I would like to sell my daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21 verse 7. In this day and age, what do you think would be a fair price for her? 3. I know that I am allowed no contact with a woman while she is in her period of menstrual uncleanliness. Leviticus 15 verses 19 to 24. The problem is how do I tell? I have tried asking, but most women take offense. 4. When I burn a bull on the altar as a sacrifice, I know it creates a pleasing order for the Lord. Leviticus 1 verses 9. The problem is my neighbors. They claim the order is not pleasing to them. Should I smite them? 5. I have a neighbor who insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35 verses 2 clearly states he should be put to death. Am I morally obliged to kill him myself or should I ask the police to do it? 6. A friend of mine feels that even though eating shellfish is an abomination, Leviticus 11 verses 10, it is a lesser abomination than homosexuality. I don't agree. Can you settle this? Are there degrees of abomination? 7. Leviticus 21 verses 20 states that I may not approach the altar of God if I have a defect in my sight. I have to admit that I wear reading glasses. Does my vision have to be 2020 or is there some wiggle room here? 8. Most of my male friends get their hair trimmed, including the hair around their temples, even though this is expressly forbidden by Leviticus 19 verse 27. How should they die? 9. I know from Leviticus 11 verses 6 to 8 that touching the skin of a dead pig makes me unclean. But may I still play football if I wear gloves? My uncle has a farm. He violates Leviticus 19 verses 19 by planting two different crops in the same field, as does his wife by wearing garments made of two different kinds of thread, cotton and polyester blend. He also tends to curse and blaspheme a lot. Is it really necessary that we go to all the trouble of getting the whole town together to stone them? Leviticus 24 verses 10 to 16. Couldn't we just burn them to death at a private family affair like we do with people who sleep with their in-laws? Leviticus 20 verses 14. I know you have studied these things extensively and thus enjoy considerable expertise in such matters, so I'm confident you can help. Thank you again for reminding us that God's word is eternal and unchanging. Your adoring fan. P.S. It would be a damn shame if we couldn't own a Canadian. See how utterly confusing the Bible can be? The spiritual world advises us to be discerning and always use our heart to guide us. God is love, the all love infinity, the spirit of life and not the wrathful, punishing God of the Bible. Can we trust the Bible? Is the Bible the word of God? Everybody is free to believe as they wish. But those of you who would like to know what really happened 2000 years ago, we are very fortunate to have This Is My Word, Alpha and Omega, an amazing book that goes far beyond the contents of the Bible, for it authentically contains the living thinking and working of Jesus of Nazareth in his own words. And for anybody interested, I am adding a link to this book beneath this video. I am also adding a link to more information on the falsification of the Bible by Jerome. I'm looking so much forward to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.